Hey, are you ready for the golf season? Second question, are your clubs ready for the golf season? We're going to talk about some things you can do, some things you can check to make sure. Let's go. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a wonderful day. I'm AJ, we're here in the Elite Fit Golf Fitting Studio and we're talking about getting ready for golf season. I don't know about you, but where I am here in Atlanta, the weather is already getting pretty warm, so golf season is definitely here. Not that it ever really goes away when you're in the south, but definitely thinking more about playing golf. And in a lot of the country, PGA Tour is on, you're watching golf, you're getting ready to go hit the links. And if you are, you want to make sure that your clubs are ready to help you perform at your best. Okay, so we're going to break this video into three parts because, well, a golf club has essentially three main parts. You got the head, the shaft, and the grip. And we're going to focus on each of those with a couple things you want to look out for and maybe some things that you want to check or make sure you get dialed in before you start your golf season. Now, if you're getting ready to get out on the course, get out on the range, and start practicing, this is a great time to just sort of take stock of what your clubs look like right now are there any issues that need to be addressed before we go and start hitting them? And the place you really want to start with this is right here in this little uh, connection between the hosel and the ferrule. Ideally, what you want to see here is just a nice smooth transition between the hosel and the ferrule. But what you will find in a lot of cases with a lot of golf clubs, especially as they get older, is you will start to see a gap. There'll be a space between the hosel and the ferrule. Now, in some cases, this is just the ferrule itself moving up. It can sort of work itself loose after repeated swings, and it's just kind of moving up. And that is no big deal. Now, I've got a video I did about getting the ferrule back in place, and I will leave a link to that down in the description. But the other thing you want to make sure of is that if you do have that gap there, it is, in fact, the ferrule moving and not the head moving, because if the head is moving, if the head is starting to come off, well, that is a big issue. So if you see any kind of gap here, the first thing I want you to do is just grab the club, one hand on the grip, one hand on the head, and just start giving it some back and forth twists and see if one, you notice any kind of movement and actually can notice the shaft moving in the hosel, which would be bad, or two, do you hear any sort of clicking, any sort of creaking sound, anything like that. Again, if you do, that is not ideal and definitely something you want to take care of before you go out and start hitting these clubs. Now, if you do hear any kind of clicking, creaking, or you see or feel any kind of movement between the shaft and the head, it's definitely something you want to get taken care of right away. So you can either take it to a local club professional, club builder who can fix it for you, or again, I have a video covering this and I will leave a link once again, in the description down below if you want to try and tackle this on your own. Okay, now once we know that the head is on, it's securely on, everything is good there, the next thing we want to really focus in on is the shaft. How is the shaft looking? Again, if you've had your set of clubs for a little while, definitely a good idea to inspect the shafts every so often. Now, when we're talking about a steel shaft, there's a couple different things you can look for. Obviously, if you look at your steel shaft and it's got little rust marks, little pit marks all over it, that is usually a pretty good indication that it may be time to either get some new clubs or get some new shafts in those clubs. Now, in most cases, those little surface rust marks aren't really going to do any damage, but it could be just sort of the top of the iceberg and there could be a bigger issue underneath. Now, even if you don't have any of those marks, what you always want to do, and I recommend doing this if you have steel shafts at least once a season, but you just want to check them and make sure that they're straight because you'd be surprised how often I get people coming into the shop to have some sort of reshaft done or something like that, and you hold the club out and you look down the shaft and you can see it's bent up here at the tip. In most cases, what you're going to see is a shaft that kind of bends like this. So it actually ends up de-lofting the club a little bit. And this happens, it can happen for various reasons. Some shafts are more prone to bending. Some golf swings just put a lot of stress on the shaft and can cause it to bend over time. Hitting off of mats can definitely do it also. 
So it's definitely something you want to check out at least once, if not more than once a year, and just sort of give a quick inspection and make sure all your shafts are straight. Now all you want to do here is just take the golf club, put it up to your face with the grip towards your eye, just kind of in a straight line, and all you're doing is just looking down the shaft and rotating it, and just checking do you notice any sort of bending in the shaft. In most cases, if there's a bend there, and you're looking for it, you're gonna find it. Now, if it's a really tiny bend, then you may not, and it really wouldn't matter. But if there's a significant bend, it's usually something you can pick up pretty easily when you start doing this and rotating it, even though you might not notice it when you just set up with the club on the ground and you hit your shot because it's sort of been bending over time and you just probably don't notice it. But again, you put it up like this, you're gonna see it. Again, if a shaft is bent like that, shaft has to go. That's not going to do you any good. There's no way to straighten it. So either new clubs or time to reshaft. Now, if you've got graphite shafts in your irons or obviously in your driver fairway wood hybrids, you're not going to usually run into any issues with rust and you're usually not going to have any issues with bend either. Yes, a graphite shaft can have bend in it, but that pretty much is always coming straight from the factory like that. And you probably would have noticed it from the beginning. It's not something that just sort of develops over time. It would have been there from the start. Now, that being said, there is something you want to definitely make sure and you check for with your graphite shafts. And that is cracks, little hairline cracks that can develop and they can develop in different places. But in most cases, you're probably going to want to look for them down by the head. If you've got cracks, up here towards the grip, it's gonna usually be pretty obvious. You're gonna hear creaking, you're gonna hear cracking sounds when you swing the club, you're gonna see it because the walls are much thinner up here. And if you've got a crack, that crack is very quickly going to deteriorate into something worse, into a break. So if you have a crack up here, you're usually gonna notice it. If you've got a crack or a series of cracks down at this end, you may not notice it because they may be very small. They may not you know, give you any real hints or clues that they're there. Now this can happen for numerous reasons. Again, it can be, well, it can be cheaper graphite materials. It can be how you swing the club. It can be hitting off a lot of mats or hitting off of hard lies consistently. It can be traveling with your clubs a lot. And so baggage handlers and things like that in the airports are banging them around. A lot of different reasons, but you definitely want to check. The easiest way to do this, and you can just sort of obviously look at it and just sort of check and see if you see any little cracks. But what I like to do is just take your fingernail, just kind of hold it against the club and just kind of rotate the club around with your fingernail on there and just sort of feel for any little cracks, any little notches that your fingernail gets caught in. That's usually going to be a pretty good way to figure out, oh, maybe there's a crack in there. Now, again, if you've got a crack in the graphite shaft, well, that shaft has to go really because it's gonna be only a matter of time and it's hard to say when that time will be, but that shaft will fail. So definitely something you wanna get taken care of, either get the club reshafted or look at a new club. Okay, we've inspected the head, we've inspected the shaft. The last thing you wanna inspect is the grip. This is something, if you don't change your grips regularly, I think it's a good idea at the beginning of the golf season to go ahead put some new grips on those clubs, make those clubs feel like new. But maybe you've got grips that seem like they're pretty good, they still seem relatively tacky, they've got good feel to them, good grip, and you just wanna refresh them a little bit. Well, number one, just get some mild soapy water and a rag and just kinda of wash the grips. Get all the old oil, all the old salt, all the old dirt, all that stuff off them. Pat them dry, that's definitely gonna help bring them back to life, give them a little bit more grip. Another thing you can do is just get a little Scotch-Brite pad, something like this, and run this over the grip again with some soapy water. Sort of roughs it up a little bit, gives it a little bit more texture, cleans off again some of the oil, the grease, the dirt, and again gives you a little bit better grip. Now, if your grips are past all of that, well then, guess what? It's time to re-grip your golf clubs. I've done plenty of videos about regripping your golf clubs, and if you need a video about how to do it, either traditionally or with compressed air, I will leave a couple of those videos, once again, down in the description below that you can check out if you want to try and do that yourself. Okay, once you've got all that done, you've checked the head, the shaft, the grip, and all that's ready to go, I've got two last recommendations for things that I would do 
before you get started with your golf season. Now the first one is to check all your lie angles. That being this angle right here between the shaft and the head. Very simple to do. All you need is a dry erase marker, some golf balls, and somewhere to hit them. I've done a video on this before. Again, I will leave a link with that video down in the description so you can see it, but it's very simple to check your own lie angles because you wanna make sure that that club is coming into the ball nice and square because that's gonna give you the best chance of your ball going at your target. Now the final thing I'd recommend is going and doing a gapping session for all your golf clubs. Very simply, a gapping session is just figuring out exactly how far you hit every one of your clubs and how big the distance space is between them. Because what you may find is you may have your six and your seven iron only flying a few yards differently, but then your seven and your eight iron could have 15, 20 yards of difference in the distances you hit them. In most cases, it's a very simple fix to just sort of bend the lofts to get everything back in line, but it's an incredibly useful thing. So if you've got either a launch monitor at home that you trust the yardages with, and you can do that at your own course, at your own range, or come somewhere like Elite Fit Golf, where we do gapping sessions all the time, and go through your entire bag, figure out exactly how far you hit everything, can only help you as you get into your golf season. Okay, so make sure that your golf clubs are ready for the golf season. And remember, I've got a bunch of different video links in the description below. So if something we talked about here is applicable to your golf clubs, you can go find that video and find out exactly what you have to do to fix it. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you go down below, like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you'll be alerted when I post new videos. Make sure you check out my other channel, Elite Fit Golf, and you can also, as always, find me on Instagram at Mobile Club Maker, and I'll see you next time.